The start of our journey was very tense. The mountain held many secrets and our way was unclear. A strange building loomed ahead of us. Its energy reverberated within us and we materialized within its entrance. We were drawn close and led into the echo of this old building. Outside, the sulfur-infused rocks lay across our path, and the landscape here was a concoction of iron, sulfur, calcium. Then we found the tower, the watchtower of shifting dimensions. Here too was the summit of Paris Mountain, and we ascended as one. Now this is a very long way down here where woman is you can get into this crevice and then it follows goes down very very steeply and where I am now I'm looking down a hole must be careful here I'm guessing between 100 and 150 feet I don't see the floor this carries on as a natural crevice going all the way down probably 300 feet and I imagine that's the dolomite that carried the malachite which they've taken out. It was then that we found the red mine of Dunedainen, the dwarven lord of old. Here his kindred had toiled with pick and axe to rid the earth of its most precious minerals. The path here was dangerous and descended steeply becoming more tricky with each step until it was necessary to climb down. We did not find the end of this forbidden and forsaken mine. We returned back to the entrance where we climbed out of this foreboding red mine onto the golden landscape of Paris Mountain. Here we are arriving at the mine marked on the map as disused and uh, oh dear, oh dear, well yes, disused is one word, um, blocked and filled might be another word that you could use. There we have it, what do you say woman? Yes. Yes, yeah, say woman. Woman says yes. Hmm. Hmm. Not happy. And uh, this rock here is heavily impregnated with fool's gold, the yellow copper, the iron, making iron parites. Lots of the stuff. See that nice rich vein of fool's gold running through there. Isn't it nice? There we see, just there. Very good. Lovely jubbly. Go then, put it in your bag, woman. Let's have it. Oh. Well done, fetch it to the car. We continued onwards and found ourselves lost in a world of colours and mystery. We passed downwards into the depths of the Mind Mountain imprisoned by the golden walls that forever watched our every move. We came upon a large rock the size of a dinosaur. This was riddled with fool's gold, tons of the stuff running in veins amid the stone. Sulphur and iron, fool's gold! footsteps away was the lost grotto of Balin, dwarf lord under the mountain. Call me a false hope. 
We have been swindled, for this is not a mine entrance. We held our hearts and made our way upwards. The magnificence of the rocks were in plain view and we could not help but to be amazed. And then we have found it, the secret entrance to Thorin himself, king under the mountain. But this was no ordinary cavern. This was a tomb, the tomb of the king. We climbed up and away with due reverence and awe. Our minds flooded with visions of the ancient empire of the Dwarven kindred. We looked around and the latent enchantments left behind by the coalition of Dwarves and ancient elves of the fourth eon of Durin were all around us. And our hearts were warm and our minds were strong. But as we headed away, we found another entrance. What was this hole? It was foul, it was degraded. The place of trolls, we thought. This was a bad place, a forbidding place, a foreboding place, an evil place. What danger lurks in here? Surely the trolls are now long dead.